This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Video producer podcast are here in the Pittsburgh area with the Wrestling Mayhem Show and IndieWrestling.us. And we're, this is a show where we talk about indie wrestling with people in and around the business of it. And uh, in Pittsburgh, a lot of Pittsburgh, of course. And it's going to be a very Pittsburgh-based show as we uh, start digging into a lot of the old stuff around uh, Pittsburgh wrestling. Uh, and, of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find all the uh, old interviews that we've done and some 180-odd-some uh, uh, interviews with the Indie Mayhem Show going way back a few years. And they're all uh, uh, very listenable, uh, as long as you know, as we were discussing before, as long as you know as it wasn't a recent one, <laughs> right? <laughs> but anyways, uh, please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, of course, Google Play uh, Podcasts. Uh, you can not miss an episode of what we're doing here. And catch us a uh, video version of the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page, and we go live there over on the Facebook page, and lately for this show, uh, especially if we have it by itself, uh, over on IndieWrestling.us's Facebook page. And uh, please uh, keep an eye on the events on Indie Wrestling and Wrestling Man Show on Facebook, so you, you never know we're going to pop up. Like, how I'm completely in a sunny window here trying to do the podcast. Man, we need blinds in the studio. But I'm really excited to have um, our uh, interview for today. Uh, he's going to be doing a history of pro wrestling in Pittsburgh class at CCAC here coming up. We're going to get into the details uh, with that. Uh, but thank you, uh, uh, uh Announcer extraordinaire is how I know him as Tom <laughs> Liturgy. But I know you've done a lot of stuff around yep, pro yep. wrestling, and I hope to get into a lot of it. Thank you for joining me here in the Thank studio. You. Thank you. Should I call you Mike or Sorg? Which do you Sorg? Prefer? People call me Sorg. Or you can call me typically. Trapper. Then. That Trapper. Is, that's good. Trapper. I'm going to I'm gonna have to adjust your title now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And before we officially get started, I want to salute you for setting roots in a city neighborhood like Beachview. Mm -hmm. uh, a small business owner, uh, putting your money where your mouth is, uh, putting money into the community and in, in the city of Pittsburgh specifically, you should be applauded for uh, staying here in the city. You know, you can go anywhere and you decided <laughs> to go in the city. So that should be applauded. I, I thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate that. And I, I truly believe like, like a Pittsburgh podcasting should have a place in Pittsburgh. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> of course. So I used to be an editor of a community newspaper. We mm -hmm. talked about that. We were based in Carrick. Uh, we were over here in Beachview, Brookline, a lot of those neighborhoods uh, a lifetime ago now, but uh, uh, I'm very familiar with Beachview and a lot of these city south neighborhoods, and uh, it's good that people are investing, much like uh, Mike the Barber next door. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, the moose down the, the street there, it's always good that people are uh, uh, investing where they they live and do business. Isn't it interesting? You know, I know we're going to get into a lot of like kind of you know some history of wrestling, but isn't it interesting? And this is kind of things you you know. I'm working on a studio wrestling documentary. One yes. day we'll get that thing done. <laughs> and uh, you know that that kind of you know you find wrestling fans everywhere. You like I, I you know set up here and realizing I have the Latin assassin next to me. That's right. <laughs> and another wrestler, and I was in there talking about his old uh, his old Jimmy Superfly wrestling stories and everything like that uh, a, a while back when and everything. And uh, you know it's it's really really cool. Yeah. It you know? when I parked. Here, I looked up, and lo and behold, I parked right in front of his barber shop. Mm -hmm. So I went in and said hello uh, before I came over here. And it's it's just dynamic that uh, the small world of professional wrestling in Pittsburgh is literally a wall apart. And, and, and yeah, exactly. And, uh, and 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 for those wondering, yes, the Latin assassin is on the get list for an interview. <laughs> he in would the near he future. would be a terrific storyteller. Oh, yes, he's been around a long time, has a lot of stories. That might and, be one of those hour episodes, yeah. as, this, as this one may be as well. So, uh, but anyways, you know, we kind of have a break the ice kind of question as usual. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, what was your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Well, it's 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 a story that I, that I love to tell is I was always a, a superhero kid. I was a comic book kid and my mother was a reader 
And my mother came to me one day, and it was in the early 70s, somewhere along the line, and she showed me a Reader's Digest article, and she said, there's a man out there that he has a ring, and you can put a 50-cent piece in his ring, Mm -hmm. and just talked about the, the enormity of Andre the Giant, and to know that there were people like that that walked among us. I'm from a little town in between Johnstown and Altoona in Cambria County. If you're six foot tall, you're a seven foot tall in, in a kid's eyes. Uh, but to have a guy like that walking the planet was really fascinating to me. And then I spent most of my childhood outside. I really didn't watch television. We didn't have cable in the sticks back in the day. I really wasn't uh, familiar with TV wrestling until the early 80s when cable came to Portage. And uh, some people, some friends had it, and we stumbled upon it. And then somewhere along the line, I saw this guy on, in Rocky Three, And I saw a guy that accompanied Cindy Lauper to the Grammys. And like, who is this, this enormous... Hulk Hogan. And that was at the, coincidentally the time of Hulkamania. And of course, watching Late Night with David Letterman, you're scared to death as a kid because you see Jerry the King Lawler pile drive Andy Kaufman in this grainy footage out in, you know, Americana somewhere. And, uh, and then, you know, Andy Kaufman throws coffee in the King's face and they cut to a commercial because it, it seems like bedlam's breaking out in uh, the late night with David Letterman uh, uh, studios. And that's really my introduction into wrestling. Then Cable came, went to college in 1986, and we would go to the common area and see if NWA was on Wednesday, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. So that's really where it began for me. Um, I love, so you, you, you got to see, like, you know, kind of as they were happening yes. there. Yes. Like a lot of the things I hear about, because I mean, I know for me, I was, you know, again, no cable, you know, growing up in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was just, I didn't know anything else. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you got to see at least like the outskirts of that that you could. Oh, naturally. sure. You know, people ask because of the class, you know, people said, well, you know, uh, what did the guy asked me yesterday? What did you do? Did you watch studio wrestling? First, I was five when it went off the air. <laughs> and no, you know, we, my mother was the one who told me about George the Animal Steel mm-hmm. uh, because she visited a friend in Beaverdale, Pennsylvania, that they, they would watch at studio wrestling. And that's where they saw George the Animal Steel. So it's ingrained this, this story that, uh, you know, my mother shared with me as a, as a young girl discovering this. And I uh, had the opportunity to meet George the Animal Steel much, many years later and tell him that story. And he was very uh, appreciative. Um, but to be able to go to a common area, California University of Pennsylvania in 1986, and sit down and watch the horsemen attack Dusty Rhodes in, wow. a, in, a, uh, in a parking lot like it was happening, mm-hmm. it almost blows your mind because, you know, they make it, make it look good. It looked like a snuff film at the time for a kid <laughs> in college. You know, so it was, it was very exciting. And it was... Uh, it it depend it always depended on the mood I was in whether I was a WWE guy or WWF at the time with Hulk Hogan or the more what I thought was a more grittier product with mm-hmm. the NWA and uh, they're both great looking back on them and, and, and that's great because you know we we do have a lot of especially younger wrestlers younger fans on the show on the wrestling ma'am show shows. And, um, you know, people that didn't experience even mm-hmm. the Attitude Era and, yeah. and, and remembering like what that was like to yeah. be in the middle of the NWO and DX and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And, and you look back now and watch a Raw from that era and you're like, eh, it's all right. <laughs> you know, like if you didn't experience it, right? Yeah, that's uh, right. And I feel like that's also happening. Like we hear the stories about everything you just described. Like, yeah, like that's, you know, whether access or age that's out of my my range and i yeah. hear about like well, was it really that great i feel like i've seen that before it's like yeah this is, these are the people that did it first yeah. right in, in these kinds of things yeah. and 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 that's what i think attracts me to the studio wrestling thing is not if i go watch a match i'm probably not gonna be as excited about it but hearing everybody tell those stories sure. is the most interesting thing i'm going talking about wrestling mayhem show and and the promotions that we work with and everybody's like jumping jimmy defagio and <laughs> and and the keystone or the carnegie cop who i got to talk to recently yeah. bruno sam and of course everybody about bruno and dominic and and everything and i've had the fortune to meet all those guys and all super super oh, un- unbelievably nice guys mm-hmm. one of the highlights of my career was going to amsterdam new york in 2012 in the car with uh, lord zoltan dominic danucci bruno san martino and a, a couple of others 
And just to be able to be on that nine hour uh, road trip, listening to Dominic and, and Bruno rib each other and, and tell stories and talk about the old times and answer questions. You know, I have a good friend that, did you ask him about this? Did you ask him? About this? It's like, no, I sat and listened. Yeah. You know, I listened to these guys talk. Absolutely. And um, I, you know, I had a, a great personal experience with, with Bruno because going up in 2012, Bruno's around 80. So, you know, he doesn't look like the guy from the 1959 or, you know, 1971. And you would walk into a rest stop along the New York uh, Turnpike and people wouldn't recognize Bruno San Martino. And then you would come out of the bathroom and there would be a food court there and Bruno would say, pizza. I haven't had pizza for a long time. Then we, he would shuffle off and get a, a slice of pizza. And then we would go to another rest stop. He would come out, same thing. And he'd go, ice cream. I haven't had ice cream. So then he would enjoy some ice cream and then whispers would be around that his, you know, his wife didn't know, you know. So I ratted out Bruno about uh, pizza and ice cream. But I think that <laughs> you know, it makes for a good story. So how did you get involved in the world of wrestling? You know, obviously you're watching this stuff, yeah. you know, and, 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 and now of course you're an announcer and you're know, doing road trips for Bruno and Dominic and, and things like that. <laughs> uh, what was the bridge in there? Is, is, is wrestling something you always wanted to get involved in, in some fashion? Like what was your gateway? Well, the, the, the funny thing was I had known about Lord Zoltan through a friend of mine, mm. uh, Drew Gordon. Drew and I went to college together. And he lived closer back in the day, and we went to a, a, a Norm Connors show out on Route 30 in Irwin, the side of a pizza shop. And I saw Lord Zoltan and, I, and Mick Foley, who was on television, won the IWC tag belts. And I'm like, how does he win in the IWC tag belts when he's on television? And... I got to talk to Mick at intermission and Mark Madden was there. I got to talk to Mark Madden and I knew that it existed, but I really didn't, you know, I always loved wrestling. I'm, I'm five, eight. I used to be, I used to weigh a lot less, you know, I could have been more athletic at the time, but I, uh, but I didn't realize that there was this training available. And then you, you know, live your life and you have jobs and then my, my wife and my son, you know, you just don't, make that kind of commitment so but I knew that it was out there and I would go to an occasional show but it never really dawned on me that I could get involved and then I started to talk to the now owner of the Keystone State Wrestling Alliance Bobby O and Bobby was involved in the KSWA and I kind of knew a little bit about this and he would tell me about the shows and of course the very first question I asked was you ever have any big name wrestlers there it's always the first question that people ask as well as you well know. And it was always, you know, we have guys from the Pittsburgh area. So my son and I started to go, and I inquired about helping to set up the ring, just to be involved in any way. And I went to a couple of shows, and I really liked what, they, what the product was, and I let Bobby know. And lo and behold, Bobby was taking over ownership of the KSWA, and he had been doing the ring announcing at the time. And he had asked me, are you interested in being the ring announcer for the KSWA. And I said, yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, I would do it for free, but don't tell them that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's that's where it began. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it just it, and that that you rolled with the KSWA train at that. I oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, it became something that uh, I was able to become involved with and I was able to use my – my talents as as rudimentary, rudimentary as they may be to mm -hmm. be a journalist and you know I decided somewhere along the line that this is a this is a professional sporting event just like the Steelers just like the Penguins just like the Pirates I'm going to write about it so that's the impetus of the reviews of the shows and the features and just to be able to to write about the product as well as 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 broadcast about the product so that's that's how that began that's awesome so so you know you, you know what was kind of the world of of what you kind of wrote and everything like that you know was it a lot of um you know was it just around kswa or was it like kind of broadly around wrestling um it would, 
really it became i've i've done some some broader stuff mm -hmm. uh, about uh, but you know I, I focused on the kswa much like you know folks focus on their own Steelers, pirates penguins that sort of thing uh but i have written about a, a broader I, I at one point i had a column for the uk's largest pro wrestling site and then that went defunct and uh you know it kind of that ended that um and then i've written some of my stuff has been in one wrestling.com world of wrestling things of that nature one of the things that i liked doing was uh, the research on a spe specific topic uh talking about the studio wrestling days the the importance of jumping johnny defazio and cannonball chuck martoni their careers post uh studio wrestling how mm -hmm. they both became involved in politics used to be something that i uh, i used to be able to tell you who your state rep your state senator who your city councilman was and uh you know allegheny county councilman i used to be able to tell you all that stuff in uh, in a career ago but uh it still was really cool to be able to to research all that and to, to have a legacy to post a legacy of what those guys have done post studio wrestling as a, a, a ken's in the uh in the in the chat um talking about that he says the most quick the most quickest and most detailed results of wrestling <laughs> show anywhere how do how does he do it while uh, while the match is in progress? Well, um, I, uh, it's kind of a shorthand, you know. If and I try to do the best that I can. If somebody has twelve wrist locks, I'm not going to be able to uh, designate all twelve uh, wrist locks. But I can <laughs> tell if uh, somebody follows up a wrist lock with a with a hip toss or something along those lines. And uh, just try to, you know, have it as accessible as possible. Uh, sometimes for me, uh, finding photos to go along with some of my stories are probably some of the uh, toughest difficulties, especially since my, my wife does, doesn't attend anymore. She used to take pictures from the, from the, from the uh, stands. So, um, but it, it, so you're kind of like me cool. you just kind of rope in the wife to uh do a job uh, <laughs> as well right uh, well this is wife number two she much like the first one could do whatever she wants and this one has decided to stay away and that's just <laughs> fine by me yes i haven't chased mine away yet at the, <laughs> she's uh, usually occupying the dvd table or if i'm short a camera person you're like, yeah yeah hey, yeah uh, can you do do hard cam for me tonight the, the uh, funny <laughs> thing is that uh marion is a is a actually a very good photographer she used to do awesome. uh photography for her kids uh yearbooks and things mm -hmm. like that uh very talented in in many ways and photography not being uh, the least of which mm -hmm. excellent um so you'll go from that you, you talked a little bit about studio wrestling obviously you've you've done a lot around it right so uh, you know and we're we're going into this this class tell us a little bit about the ccac class and, and kind of how it came about sure um i attended the extraordinary life and times of bruno san martino in the spring that was held by christopher cruz the former wcw announcer and mm. and chris came up for two classes and the second of which bruno attended and uh, we had a real good time and he also said you know we had some talks about maybe extending it doing something a little different uh, in the fall maybe something a little bit more encompassing so stupidly i was home one day and i decided to reach out to ccac and i called and they answered the phone and i said you know i attended the extraordinary life and times of bruno san martino i'm interested in perhaps hosting a class in the fall that would be great she said can you send me something so i sent her something and lo and behold before i knew it i'm in the catalog so <laughs> <laughs> and um we have more than the uh, more than twice the minimum needed so mm -hmm. i have to teach the class there you go <laughs> so it's been a life you know it's the more i do the research I, I see that some of the groundwork has been laid in some of the stuff like the uh, Chuck Martoni and Jumpin' Johnny DeFazio piece that I did and uh, some of the stuff on Bruno San Martino in the past mm -hmm. and uh, some of the other stuff along the way. Um, 
but to also be able to to research and one of the things that uh, at the CCAC class they talked about Bruno and and him coming over from Italy and starting in 1959 and I'm thinking you know pro wrestling was around before 1959 and it was be before studio wrestling and uh, my exclusive to you sorg today is studio wrestling did not begin in 1959 you look at some websites and you see a date that says November 15th. And it's always been asserted that it was 1959. Well, I went and I looked to see, was November 15th, 1959, a Saturday? It was not. So I started to ask around to some people that uh, are much more learned than I. And no one said that studio wrestling actually started in, on a Sunday. So through my research, I've, I've discovered, and this is your exclusive, Studio Wrestling started in November 15, 1958. So there you go for your documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Free of charge. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it started in 1958 at uh, what is now WPXI, uh, at WIIC. Uh, so... What I've also been able to discover is wrestling. There were wrestling matches in the city. I'm looking, I'm trying to find more information about the building. I've looked at so many buildings that I can't remember the name of it. There was one, is, I believe, close to the point that used to be down at the point. The earliest wrestling show that I could find was at this building not down near the point in, uh, prior to 1900. Wow. And there were three matches or something like that, and... Uh, I have to find that again. It's in my notes, uh, but that's the earliest one. But I'm going to make note of that, but then we're also just going to start from 1900. Mm -hmm. 1905-ish, there seems to be a lot of uh, Ed Strangler. Lewis was here. Uh, gorgeous George Wagner was here in like 1949, 1950. Wow. I've been uh, searching uh, Mildred Burke, who was Mae Young and who was the fabulous moolah before Mae Young and the fabulous moolah. She was here at the Duquesne Gardens, which used to be over in Oakland back in the day. State-of-the-art facility. It was, a hockey, uh, it was a hockey facility. It was a dance ballroom. It was a boxing venue. It was a wrestling venue. And then almost overnight, it became an obsolete uh, facility because of just the advancement of things that were happening at that time. Jeez. And uh, there, were, uh, there were a bunch of different locations. The Islam Grotto, which is, was around where Allegheny Center, the aviary, that area, that's where that used to be, on Montgomery Avenue, 107 Mon East Montgomery, I think it was. And then uh, Chris Korbelik, I hope I'm saying his name right, uh, and I were just recently discussing about uh, the arena, which was another wrestling venue. It is near where the uh, Animal Humane Society is on the North Shore by Western Avenue. Hmm. I think it's the 1000 block. It used to be a, uh, it, it, I think the police station is close to that now. In that area, there was a uh, venue called the arena that uh, there was wrestling Back in the day, there used to be, you know, as you know, the KSWA was at the Lawrenceville Moose for, for years. We just recently had our 100th event at that location. That's not the only Moose Hall in the city of Pittsburgh that had a, a wrestling venue. Earlier than that, in the 20s or the 30s, there was a couple of shows at a Moose Lodge that was on Penn Avenue. Now that charter is now in uh, the Penn Hills, not Penn Hills. It's near Shaler, Aspenwall area. Um, uh, lodge 46 is that lodge now, but the physical location was on Penn Avenue, and they had some wrestling back then too. So this was all before Fineview. It was all before I W I I C, and uh, you know the Grotto was a place that Angelo Poffo wrestled, wow. uh, and just these these great names. And of course, Angelo Poffo, the father of Correct. Macho Man and uh, and the Lanny genius. Poffo, yeah. Lanny Poffo. So uh, a lot of guys came from Chicago and wrestled here. Another thing that I've uh, discovered was um, I hate to tell people that you know we talked about. Uh, you know, historians that think 15 years ago was 
you know, groundbreaking or 20 years ago was I was once at a show where a kid we talked about introducing the combatants in the main event old school, you know, bring them out. The music comes out. Mm -hmm. They stand on each side and you introduce them as they're in the ring. And the guy, the kid goes, oh, yeah, old school ECW. <laughs> And I'm sure that it was decades before um, uh, Rocky and Apollo Creed wrestled, uh, fought in, uh, in uh, Rocky in 1976. It was an old boxing thing before it ever became a wrestling thing mm -hmm. you know, 100 years ago. Um, but I've lost my train of thought. I thought I was going to get back to it. But uh, <laughs> the, you know, these great uh, facilities and a lot of these... A lot of these guys came from Chicago, and they, a lot of the promoters were uh, boxing promoters as well as wrestling promoters. They, they did a little bit of, of everything when it came to that. Um, and at the time, didn't that cross over a little bit? Yes. Especially uh, early 1900s probably, right? Yeah, there was because there, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of football players after their football playing days were done, they either went into boxing or more likely wrestling. I think the state athletic commission at the time had a lot to do with that too. I, I recently found an article, I think it was 1957, that the state was trying to um, deregulate some of the, uh, the laws and rules that allowed for uh, more wrestling shows. I think that there was a time that there was an ebb and you know there's always an ebb and a flow but i think it was the interest in wrestling was down a couple of years before gorgeous george was here in 1950 and uh i and there's other characters that i found along the way that are just very fascinating and there were al abrams was a sports columnist for one of the many Pittsburgh papers back in the day and there was a, a there was a writer that wrote to him and asked about why they don't cover wrestling uh more in the paper and they did a lot you know it's it's amazing that they 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 did that uh but the guy said he likes his and this was 1949 maybe yeah i think it was 1949 and the and the columnist wrote back that he likes his sports a little bit more legitimate 1949 Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and there have been allusions to the fact that it may not be the most uh, legitimate of sports, whatever uh, you know, whatever we we bring to the whatever we individually bring to the table or collectively. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, there were some questions on whether or not it was legitimate. 70 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so not a new thing, you know. That's right. Like, That's I, right. I always, I always joke that, you know, in, in, in school there was like, uh, well, you know, uh, being, being told uh, – Santa wasn't real, and yeah. uh, wrestling was the thing I still held on to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was always funny, too. My mother, again, uh, she worked at a facility in Evansburg, and they brought in a guy to talk to some of the, talk to some of the people that are that, at her workplace. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the guy was a former professional wrestler. And I can't remember his name for the life of me. My mother doesn't remember his name either. And afterwards, my mother walked up to him and said, you know, my son's a big fan of wrestling. And the guy looked at her and he goes, you know, it's fake. <laughs> oh, no. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you say that? Wow. Especially a guy that did it. <laughs> yeah. Too. A guy that, you know, at least for, for some time, I think he was a, a jobber of some sort Jeez. on. Uh, oh, that's why he's a little bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a little bitter. I think so. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Uh, wow. So, so you know, it sounds like in the, so tell us, is the class, uh, how many how many sessions is it? Two, cla is it? two classes. Okay. October 11th and October 18th. Mm -hmm. uh, CCAC North Hills, Perrysville Avenue. Um, you can find it in the catalog. You can find it on the CCAC website. It's $49. I didn't make the price. <laughs> Um, forty nine dollars, and we have more than the minimum, which really surprised me because I'm really nobody. You know mm. what I mean? I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a guy that loves it and had had been blessed with all kind of opportunities, and to be able to to share some of my knowledge and, and talk to. I'm still surprised when people contact me and say I'm signed up for your class, and it's mm -hmm. like that's that's awesome. You know, October six thirty 
to 9.30, so you should be able to get up there after and, rush hour. And it feels like something that, like, like, like the class I've seen on Facebook a lot, you know, especially the studio wrestling group, mm-hmm. things like that. Like, you know, people, uh, people, actually, several times this week, I, I got sent, did you know you're doing this class at CCAC? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah, the teacher's going to be here Thursday. <laughs> so, you know, so it, and, and not circles, you know, casually wrestling fans yeah. you know things like that yeah uh so so i mean it has gotten a bit out there yeah it, so. it has uh, <laughs> there was a, a story uh the incline posted on my 50th birthday on monday so it was mm-hmm. a uh, that was a that was a birthday present for me and uh and i had a nice article um had uh, this is a great opportunity here i've always wanted to to visit you and to visit mm-hmm. the show and uh, I have an interview tomorrow, and I, I had one earlier today. Um, but it has been a terrific. Bill Powerhouse Hughes has been a champion of uh, one of the most original columnists that, that we have uh, in western Pennsylvania, the Herald Standard. He has been having a, a little uh, note about the class each and every mm. Sunday, which is terrific. I was talking, I was uh, emailing a columnist in in the Johnstown area asking if they would at least acknowledge that a hometown kid was was doing this class. And, of course, they weren't interested because it's two hours away. But, um, but he had read, you know, Powerhouse Hughes' column. So... He knew that it was out there, so that's that's great. It's it's quite far from uh, that readership area, but you know, with the, the internet, uh, the class. I mean, the column has been shared a bunch, and he's a great guy. Uh, have you ever been to a CWF show back in the day when Powerhouse had uh, his shows? Down I on? I've been to the venue. I, I've met Powerhouse, okay. so I'm familiar with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether you know. Uh, whether you like him, don't like him, I was I li- I always liked Bill. We're Vulcan brothers, <laughs> tell you together. Uh, but he was the only guy that I had ever gone to an independent show. He was the promoter. At the end of the show, he stood at the door and he shook hands with everybody who left. Mm-hmm. It's a class act, absolutely. So um, you know, we try to thank people as much as we can, but. Uh, I've, I, you know, maybe I should at FanFest this year. I don't know, but <laughs> we always, you know, he's a he's a class guy, and uh, uh, I'm I'm blessed to have as much coverage of the of the class as I have. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I really really hope this this does well. Maybe we'll have a second one. Huh? Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's what I was thinking because I've communicated with Chris Cruz, mm-hmm. and Chris is hoping to bring the Bruno class back in Good. the spring. Good. He wants to do a three day class. He talked about doing a three day class last year. Why he would want to drive from Baltimore three times to do that, Jeez. I don't know. But um, uh, you know, he can do that and. As much interest as this has received, I'd be more than happy to do it again next fall as well. Once we get all the kinks out and that sort of thing, but it would be uh, it would be a lot of fun to to do that as well. It could be a whole curriculum. Say that again. <laughs> it could be a whole curriculum <laughs> in the end. <laughs> it may be in a accredited class by the time it's over. There you go. There you go. Time <laughs> to go back to school, guys. Um, all right. Well, hey, you know, you've been at this for a bit. You've been around indie wrestling a long mm-hmm. time. Uh, tell me what the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling is. Oh, the best and the worst. Can I go with the worst first? Because that has always been, uh, it's the best story, actually. Okay. This, I, I have been blessed to not work not only with the uh, KSWA since 2005. I was VOW's first announcer back in the day. Adam Montgomery is a good friend. Uh, he wasn't able to be at that first show, and I understand that's why I was asked. He was the uh, he was the the ring announcer after that until you know life gets in the way sometimes. And I've pinch hit at PWX, and generations of pro wrestling mm-hmm. was uh, in the Overbrook area a couple of years ago. You and I and uh, about five others were there. Um, <laughs> it's all available on YouTube on my personal <laughs> account, by the way. Um, and one of the one of the best opportunities that I've had for storytelling, nonetheless, was I worked at uh, Legends Pro Wrestling in Wheeling and uh, Moundsville at the time, and I picked up 
uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake <laughs> for a show. And Brutai. he was Brother Brutai. Brutai. He was arrogant from minute one. And I picked him up. I, I was able to pick him up, and I drove him to the venue, or to the uh, hotel, rather. And he was just, he was just, you know, you couldn't talk to him. He didn't have anything to say. And I, I had the best opportunity that I had in that same promotion. I took Lex Luger around 10 years ago this month. And that was three weeks before he had his spinal stroke. Jeez. And he was terrific. On a scale of 1 really? to 10, he was a 13. He, yeah. was, he was great. But Brother Brudai, on the other hand, I would take him to the hotel, and he was just so crabby. And I would ask him questions, and he really was curt with his answers, and he really didn't have anything to say. And we were on our way to the, to the venue, and he goes, can, I, can you take me to Walmart? i got to buy some Polaroid film for my camera. And I said, yeah, sure, you know. And I said, just trying to get anything out of him. I said, you're going you're gonna to go promote the show, do some cutting and strutting while you're in the Walmart. And he goes, I'm just buying film, man. I'm just buying film. And I left him off at Walmart. I went and I called one of my friends who was on the show, and I said, I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to take his bag out of my Ford Explorer. I'm going to leave it at the front door of the Walmart, and I'm going to drive away. And uh, then ultimately I decided it was the professional thing to do was to take Brother Brudai back to the uh, – to the venue so I did not leave him there I took him to the venue and uh, sped to the airport to take him back at the end uh, at the end of the night um, but yeah that was that was the worst uh, that was the worst one that I had um, and the best that they're always topping you know like I said the, the Lex Luger who was just really terrific uh we went to a bunch of different steakhouses and i never picked up a i never picked up a dime i never had to pick up a tab he picked up everything and we were at a steakhouse and everywhere we went they recognized the total package and we went to the steakhouse and we're sitting there and the uh the waitress comes over and she goes i understand that we have a celebrity here and lex goes yeah i'm just happy here to be here with tom and uh and the, and the waitress says you know the uh uh, the the chef has picked out the steaks for you guys. He went through and he picked, personally picked them out. And Lex says, bring them out. I'd like to say hi. So you see this young kid come out, and Lex Luger's just talking to this, just talking to this young kid. And you could see that he was, you know, he, he was so happy. And he's probably still telling that story to this day, much like I tell the story. But he was just, he was just so genuine and loving to all the fans. The fans were trying to burn WWE to the ground at the time. And, and Lex is like, you know, Vince is just a businessman. And he's a family man. And he cares about the business. And he cares about family. And he was just positive the whole time. And, and that, was, that was really good. Uh, some of the other good, uh, the other good times I had, we just had uh, Demolition Axe, his last singles match at Brawl Under the Bridge, the biggest event we've ever had. That was uh, earlier this summer. And to be able to see Mitch Napier, our champion, hoist Brohemoth up before his Sioux Falls slam and hear 600 people go, <gasps> all at the same time, that sends chills down your, up your arm and mm -hmm. down your spine and to have so many people tell that. And just the, just the simple things that people that are, we have diehard fans. And they, they'll tell you if something stinks, and, but they're just there to have a good time. And when they tell us that they've had a great show, they've had a great time, that ties it all the time. You know, I'm not one of these guys that has to, you know, I've thrown around some you know, big names and stories, but uh, sometimes it's just to have a great show that flows and, People are send, send, sometimes are sent home angry at the end. Sometimes they're sent home happy. Years ago, Double A turned, uh, turned from a good guy to a bad guy. And I've heard the story many a times. A, a family friend 
their daughter had a double-A poster on her wall. She went home and tore it down, ripped it up, and threw it in the trash. How do you beat that? <laughs> that, was, that was her Hollywood Hogan moment. That right? was her Hollywood you know Hogan I mean? moment. That's right. How many people threw out their, their red and yellow <laughs> stuff when that happened? That's you know? right. And, and but the, but there were, it's, it's just as big as something like that. Oh yeah, seeing that. Yeah. So and, and another story that uh, that we've always loved was there was a kid in Lawrenceville and he was going to one of the elementary schools or whatnot and he had a John maybe a John Cena T-shirt on mm-hmm. and he went to the nurse and through the grapevine we know the nurse and uh, the kid went into the nurses and uh, the nurse said oh, John Cena's on your T-shirt John Cena your favorite wrestler. And the kid goes, no, La Lucha. And it was, you know, it was the biggest name we had back in yeah. 2005, 2006. That's when it <laughs> happened. He was our top baby face at the time. Yeah. And uh, you can't forget things like that. We had posters. From time to time, we have photographers come in, and they'll take posters, and we'll get posters made and, and whatnot. And we had Biker Al. Biker Al was a, a guy that actually I was in a tag team match against, you know, when I was a long time ago. But anyway, uh, there was a Biker Al poster that somebody had overseas in a barracks, in one of the Army barracks. And you have a Biker Al, you know, in an American military facility, a Biker Al poster. You know, you can't, you can't beat that. That's pure That's Pittsburgh. That's pure Americana. That's amazing. I mean, it's really, it really is ingrained here, isn't it? I, it is. I, that's what, and that's what I love about it. I love that energy around it and, and, and everything. And that's why, and, 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 and you know, I, I don't talk about KSWA much on the shows because I have a kind of a, you know, I know we, we have viewers all over the place. So you have the kind of a, if it's online, yeah. then it's, it's out there. But if you're in Pittsburgh, like, there's just a different energy. Oh, when, yeah. When, when, when I have, I, I run into people and they're like, there's, there's wrestling in Pittsburgh. And I'm like, do you, you have no <laughs> idea about wrestling in Pittsburgh. There's wrestling in pittsburgh south of pittsburgh east That's of right. pittsburgh there's everywhere and and uh everybody has their their uh feel to them and, oh sure and, and that kswa kind of vibe especially like at, at spirit hall i know i've been to oh, a few yeah. times this year yep. and everybody's got a, a, a blue ribbon in their hand and and, <laughs> <laughs> and throwing them back so it's got a whole different kind of vibe than any oh, of the yeah. other shows in the area you know it's that's what the incline the article I did with the incline, I think that they touched on that. We talked a lot more about that in uh, in the story itself, where really within 30 minutes of where you live in metropolitan Pittsburgh, you can go to a show. Absolutely. You can go to a wrestling show. I've been to RWA. I've been to IWC. I've paid all. I've paid for a ticket everywhere I go. I go, uh, what did I miss? IWC, PWX. Um, the first one I mentioned, I <laughs> RWA. I've paid. I've paid to go see all of them. They all have their their vibe, and they all have passionate fan bases. I'm certainly not going to say you're wrong for going to this show. You're mm-hmm. wrong for going to this show. Whatever you want. And different vibes of wrestlers and that, that that they attract on the roster too. Oh yeah, uh, as yeah. well. So I, I think that's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. A guy like Chris Larusso, who I consider a friend. A guy like Jack Pollock, who I consider a friend. You know, these guys are you know working at different facilities. Uh, Rick Diamond over Black Diamond over on mm-hmm. uh, West Virginia. I still gotta get down to a Black Diamond show. That's all my <laughs> I, best. I nearly <laughs> went to their anniversary Me show. Too. Something came up. Yeah, so I just you know I couldn't find anybody to go with. Yeah, really, yeah. at the spur of a moment on a Sunday night, mm-hmm. it's a little different. But I have a great respect for what that guy is trying to do out there because I had a little taste in West Virginia. And, you know, that is, Wheeling is a town that could be, you you have enough resources, and Rick just now got himself a new building. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that you can can build on. And once you have, you know, those resources at hand, you have an opportunity to build something. And, you know, uh, Derek, who I consider a friend down at RWA, he does his own thing down there. Uh, you know, they're lucky enough to bring guys like Sanjay Dutt in. You know, Sanjay asks around. He tries to get on different shows. Mm-hmm. But they've done a great job of, you know, cultivating their fan base and their roster. And, you know, PWX is a great learning ground for a lot of these guys. Um, it, that's what I consider, you know, that's what 
you know, it can be whatever um, is my opinion. The only one that matters. Absolutely not. People can do whatever they want, Mm -hmm. but you know, that's, that's that IWC is a, is a great, uh, you know, they travel a little bit, uh, you know, Clearfield and, and, uh, you know, their base is in Elizabeth and that sort of thing. And I have some friends that, and I've known some people down there, um, you know, people can like whatever they want. Mm-hmm. If you right. like the great technicality of a particular wrestler, go see that wrestler. I, I was putting together a project and I need to, I need to get it out there a little more for Pittsburgh wrestling.com, like a, a calendar. Cause I saw this in SoCal when I yeah. visited there and I'm like, Oh, this is a great idea, you know? <laughs> and just with the wrestling, I, I plugged in all the dates for everything that was with in an hour drive of Pittsburgh. And you can literally go see a wrestling show oh, sure. every weekend. I think at the time through, up until Thanksgiving, yeah. I, think, I think it was. Yeah. So, like, that, that, that's pretty cool that that's, that's something you can do as a wrestling Oh, fan. sure, sure. So. And you can see all kind of, you know, like I said, you see, you want to see somebody that's technically sound, or do you want to see, you know, somebody like Lord Zoltan that does mm-hmm. some great uh, in-ring psychology before you're ever even locking up? Right. There's something for everyone to enjoy, and especially in western Pennsylvania, you don't have to go too far to see it. Yep. Nope. That's why you can see a lot of great talent on, on, on your Monday nights from Pittsburgh, too. Um, so uh, who are you watching these days? Is, is there anybody that's got your attention uh, out there, either on the indies or, or anybody on TV that's really kind of sticking out um, that, that you're seeing out there? Um, you know, I do try to watch uh, wrestling on, on Monday nights. I, I'm still spoiled because... I watched every moment of Raw and Nitro back in the day with Sting and <laughs> and uh, all those guys. Um, I really don't watch uh, intently. Um, you know, John Cena's fun to watch. I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns. I think that uh, you know he, he just you know it's just not uh, he's not a classic good guy and. I'm a I'm a guy that likes good guys versus bad guys. That's what that's what wrestling's about. Um, Braun Strowman, how 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 cool is Braun Strowman? Jeez, oh, yes. You know the guy is nearly seven feet tall. The guy's nearly four hundred pounds, and you know can drop kick and just do some having classic moves. matches on a regular basis with the Big Show. When is the last <laughs> time you got excited about anybody being paired up with the nothing against Big yeah, Show? Yeah. He's freaking amazing. Yeah. But when's the last time you you got excited about seeing somebody get paired up with him for a main event yeah. like multiple times <laughs> in the last 6 months, right? Yeah, that's right, you know, and um I I'm perplexed on, on Monday nights, I'm perplexed as to what happened to Bailey mm-hmm. because here was somebody that was supposed to be the female John Cena, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't happened. Um, on, the, on the local scene, you know, we talked about uh, I've never seen Laura Loveless work a wrestling match, but the bits and pieces that I've seen, she's very funny, very smart, and it seems to be very talented in in what she does. I would like to I would like to see her wrestle someday. I'm, uh, you know, I don't travel to a whole lot of shows anymore, but I from afar I I really like what she's doing. Uh, there's a couple of uh, other younger girls that are coming up as well that uh, I'm waiting I'm waiting to see what happens with them because as you know, sometimes you know. Not to throw shade on somebody, but sometimes people are flashes in the pan. Mm-hmm. You know, they're here. You know, they're one. They're here one minute, gone the next. Right. Um, right. Especially in pro wrestling. <laughs> especially in pro wrestling. Um, you know, on on the independent scene, like I said, uh, Jack Pollock is a guy that I've 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 seen and uh, watched from afar. Uh, Chris LaRusso. We're both we're geographically from the same part of the state. He's from Altoona. I'm from Portage which is only about 15 minutes away. Uh, da- another guy that's wrestled with us a little bit was uh, the gavel, David Lawless. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, a, he's a very talented guy. Uh, MV Young, who really, you know, he could have been a KSWA heavyweight champion, could have been a champion in any, faci- any uh, federation he wanted. Uh, sometimes life goes a different way and he has his last match in Pennsylvania for now with us, uh, on uh, Saturday night. 
Uh, he's moving to Florida with his uh, family down there. His family needs him down there. And so kudos for him for stepping up to help with mm -hmm. his family when, when needed. He's a guy that's talented. Remy LeVay is a talented guy. The jester, Keith Hott. How, how great of a talent is, is Keith Hott? Mm -hmm. He's just a, a, a fun uh, – I don't know if there's very many more good-hearted guys than him out there. Um, you know, and then, you know, f new for us, you know, Bubba the Bulldog debuted, uh, loved his time with us. Uh, I know that Dennis Gregory has been around for a long time. Uh, Dennis is, is a terrific talent still, and, uh, he has been a great addition for us and, and uh, you know, our talent. Uh, you know, I don't know. I've often, I've written, I think I've coined the phrase that Lord Zoltan is the most important independent wrestler to ever come out of Western Pennsylvania. I still believe that. Uh, a guy like T. Rantula. T. Rantula and Betty Esper are in a picture in Pittsburgh Magazine, the October issue from Brawl Under the Bridge because T. Rantula drove his, his uh, motorcycle to the ring with 84-year-old uh, Betty Esper on the back oh, wow. for the main event. The place went absolutely berserk. And, uh, you know, that's a picture that's – when you have a Pulitzer Prize-winning photographer like Martha Ryle come to take photos two years in a row mm -hmm. at an event, and then, you know, it's a project that she'd been working on for some time, and now it's uh, in Pittsburgh Magazine. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, and it's, and it's very fortunate to be able to, to do, do stuff like that. Another guy that, that's on our roster and is a personal favorite of mine is the face of Pittsburgh, Dr. Devastation, Lou Martin. Here's a guy that, uh, you know, the two-time champion, multi-time tag team champion, reinvents himself as the face of Pittsburgh, and he's in the video on the ABC News video where Michael Konings is gauging the, uh, the voting, uh, whatever people wanted to vote for for the presidential election, and, and he bursts in because he's the face of Pittsburgh, <laughs> vote for me. You know, these, you know, they, they're still a lot of my favorites. And another guy that, that he's never going to win a, 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 any kind of championship based on, you know, he's not Luthez in the ring. He's not. The King Del Douglas is somebody that on the apron, cheering on his tag team partner or agitating his opponent, I'm sorry, there's, no, but there's nobody anywhere better than him at doing that. And he, you know, you look, we were lucky enough, there was, excuse me, there was a photographer at Millville Days on Friday night, and they had a picture of uh, action in the ring, and, and you see Del Douglas's face in the corner just screaming at the photographer. It's terrific. You know, it's just a, a fun photo. And whatever, whatever people like in wrestling, and that's what I like in wrestling. People can like whatever they want. Awesome. And if somebody wants to dive from a 20-foot uh, balcony and miss a guy <laughs> on a table, a table. <laughs> if you want to do that and you like that, who am I to say that's not what you like? Somebody, somebody said something up a, co a couple of shows ago, and I'm just like, are you trying to recreate that video? <laughs> 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 but anyways, thank you so much. It's been awesome. We could go another couple of hours at this, I, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, Tom, it, 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 you know, again, we're going to check out the show, or I'm sorry, the show and at the, the KSWA and, and, the, and the class. Well, KSWA, check out KSWA.net for the, that's the official uh, the website of the Keystone State Wrestling Alliance. KSWADigest.com is my blog, has all the features, has all the news, mm -hmm. reviews of the shows, that sort of thing. You can Google CCAC, it's probably .edu. <laughs> Uh, and find the uh, history of professional wrestling in Pittsburgh uh, class, October 11th, October 18th, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., and uh, hope to see you there. And, uh, and anywhere you live in western Pennsylvania, if you're watching this anywhere and you're interested in pro wrestling, Find a show near you that's not too far. Chances are very good that the prices are going to be a lot better than what you're going to pay at a gigantic venue. Go 
and see the local product, buy T-shirts, whatever the merchandise they have available, support the indie wrestling wherever you want to see it because you're going to find something that you're going to love, not just like. You're going to find something you're going to love regardless of, of what you like in the way of the style. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, and check out the show. Check out everything. And, and, and just like we always say, until next time, support me. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.